good morning everyone and uh, today we will discuss about uh, uh, probabilistic modeling of a random experiment so in the last class we had already discussed about uh, basic concept of probabilistic modeling so we are having uh, a random experiment that means uh, an experiment whose outcome we can't predict in advance that means if you are tossing a coin in advance we can't say that head will come or tail will come but one thing we can say that what are the possible outcome all possible outcome so if you are listing out all possible outcome that we call it sample space and we denote it by omega this is the first basic concept in the process of probabilistic modeling of a random experiment so uh, omega you can say that it is collection of all possible outcome and it is a two step computation of uh, uh, sample space that means first you have to uh, come up with identification of a uh, general or arbitrary kind of outcome and then you have to uh, list out all possible outcome in the second step so you need to first identify the pattern of outcome what kind of form outcome would be there so it is based on random experiment as random experiment varies uh, the nature of outcome will vary okay then second we had discussed about within the sample space we come up with concept of event of interest so event is always happens to be a subset of a sample space and it is constructed or defined uh, by a given a statement there must be a statement a apart from being a subset of sample space uh, we say that sub uh, event happens to be uh, some possible outcome it is not like that uh, we are taking all possible outcome we are talking about some possible outcome because the statement will be satisfied by some possible outcome not it is like that all possible outcome if it is satisfied by all possible outcome then we simply say that uh, we are very much deterministic in nature and hence we are talking about sample space so event happens to be a, a subset of a sample space and you talk about uh, uh, some collection of possible outcome outcomes and particularly here you call it and a statement would be given there in either it would be in impl implicit form or in explicit form you have to identify that a statement so there must be a statement uh, in order to define a, an event and in that process uh, if you talk about all possible event i am not talking about all possible subset uh, all possible subset if you talk about a set is having to the power n number of uh, possible subset so i am not talking about all those all possible subsets uh, here definitely the number of event would be less than if you talk about number of event this uh, number of event it would be less than 2 to the power n n is the cardinality of uh, omega so that uh, you might be already aware of that from your high school mathematics it would be number of uh, this kind of a it must be less than equal to 2 to the power n 2 to the power n is talking about number of subsets but here we are not interested in all possible subset of the sample space okay we just are interested a specific kind of subset which is constructed by a, a given uh, statement okay okay so these two things we had discussed in the last class then i had told that the third basic concept in the probability modeling is the probability measure so in this lecture we will discuss in detail about probability measure as a map uh, from uh, all possible events i am not talking about subset all possible event and the collection we denoted by sigma omega sigma this we call it sigma algebra algebra means simply it is uh, a collection of number or collection of set which is dealing with uh, algebraic two basic algebraic like if you talk about uh, in number uh, there are only two operations so if you talk about in number suppose you are taking real number so if you talk about algebra of real numbers then means you just deal with addition and multiplication uh, addition and multiplication okay if someone is asking 
if someone is asking what about subtraction subtraction is a special case of addition okay and someone is asking what is meaning of division division is also a special case of addition so if you uh, talk about uh, a by b actually a you are multiplying with uh, um, uh, 1 by b so uh, division is a special case of multiplication so in total actually uh, if you talk about real number it is having just two uh, algebraic operation addition and multiplication and whatever properties are getting with respect to these to, uh, two operations uh, we come up with algebraic property of the real number likewise if you come in a set uh, kind of concept the uh, similar pattern we call it uh, addition we denote it by uh, union and multiplication you can uh, replace it by intersection kind of things okay and there is uh, also one operation that we call it complementation complementation dash sometimes you put it a dash complement or ac is like uh, or you sometimes you you might have already seen that so set theory things where you deal with this kind of operation so that we call it algebra of set theory okay so algebra here uh, uh, now uh, here we are talking about uh, sigma algebra so sigma is related with very much uh, summation kind of things so or summation is again you talk about union kind of things so union kind of things it is related with that so that's where this one is sigma algebra you don't have to go for exact uh, that abstract definition what in mathematics is defined in so you don't have just you call it it is collection of subset of the omega which are constructed by some given statement so so that kind of collection uh, sigma uh, omega is and now we are talking about probability measure it is similar <laughs> what probability you had already seen in high school mathematics but it is getting a more concrete uh, form uh, not in formula based in a very generic base uh, thanks to kolmogorov approach so we are proceeding further same thing i discussed that all possible outcome we call it sample space then you come up with uh, event that means as a collection of some possible outcome satisfying a given a statement in the experiment or in the question wherever you encounter probability kind of thing so uh, if you uh, are willing to compute uh, uh, sample space uh, in uh, throwing uh, two dice together then sample space it will have uh, uh, dice is having six faces so you are uh, throwing two times so sample space will have in total 36 uh, order pair that uh, order pair as an outcome or so here, here outcome omega is an order pair okay likewise if you are willing to define in this experiment itself an event so event we are defining by a statement that sum of the numbers on the dice is seven if you are uh, throwing two dice together then what is the sum of number on the faces of those two dice so uh, here we are fixing it by seven so uh, it is not like that all possible uh, outcome will satisfy this statement just few uh, outcome will satisfy this statement what are those these six uh, uh, faces uh, these six order pair or outcome will satisfy this assessment that's why these are in the uh, event e and rest would be outside e in e complement okay so this is the way to compute uh, event now once you are having a better idea understanding of uh, sample space and event we are talking about probability measure okay so probability measure you can call it it happens to be a number or you can uh, say that you are assigning a number to an event okay of interest so how we are assigning that so in order to model a random experiment in an intuitive way probability measure specify uh, say that what is the likelihood of occurrence of an event okay or what is the likelihood of occurrence of a set and that set occurs through uh, the possible outcome which uh, are in the set and uh, through some kind of criteria okay and and hence we are getting an event so numerically we can say that we specify possible measure for measure means just one kind of uh, you are trying to count it you associate with some number some num some numeric thing measure means numeric you try to associate, attach a numeric thing so we specify probability measure for each event a as our degree of confidence how much confidence uh, we are that that event a will occur so event a will occur through out outcome of experiment okay uh, 
so how how much we are confident so we are trying to compute degree of confidence so we can say that the probability is one kind of degree of confidence so it measures the degree of confidence whether a that event it occurs by assigning a probability uh, measure that we call it probability of a and it happens to be a map from uh, that sigma algebra of omega to of close interval 01 and this probability measure Uh, don't confuse with the term probability measure. Simply, it is a probability of an event. You can call it right now, uh, just for your understanding. But actually, general, uh, more concrete name is probability measure. We call it. Okay, and the probability measure, it it is a function from sigma algebra to uh, close interval zero one, and it has to satisfy certain number of axioms. Uh, that means you don't need to prove that axiom. By default, those happens to be true. Okay. So the first axiom is that if you are taking a an event which is having no possible outcome of the random experiment, that we denote it by phi, empty set. We call it empty set or event empty event. What is the probability of empty event or empty set? It is zero. And likewise, what is the probability of uh, uh, the all possible outcome uh, that contain in uh, sample of space? That means what is the probability of sample of space? So it is probability is one. That means you are taking uh, into account like all possible outcome. That someone is saying that I will win when I will get head or tail. That means that that person is taking all possible scenario and there is no option of living. So it becomes a uh, no option of losing. It becomes what uh, obvious choice of winning. So it is very much deterministic kind of thing. Okay. So that's why in that case we say that it's certain. A probability of a certain thing always happens to be equal to one. If you you are taking Into consideration of all possible outcome, so that's where what is the probability uh, of sample space? It is equal to one. That means we say that it is a certain thing. Okay. Now second, if you take any improper kind of uh, any proper kind of uh, event, proper kind of event means uh, a is neither phi or not uh, uh, omega. So in that case, the probability of a it would be between zero and one. So it is. Strictly between zero and one. Okay, where a is any event characterized by a given a statement. Okay, now the third one is very meaningful things, and that's why uh, we can uh, call it uh, that sigma thing is coming here. So if you are willing to compute the probability of a union b, and it happens that a and b are having no common outcome. Then just we do sum the probability corresponding probability. So provided that a, a, there are no common element between a and b. Okay, so this is this we call it summability probability. Also you can call it you you can generalize it for uh, countable number of event as well. So these three are very much uh, interesting kind of problem. And so here I had already told that uh, the third axioms we can generalize it for countable number of. Uh, Mutually disjoint uh, events. Call it A1, A2, A3. So it is it is coming in a sequential manner. These sets are coming in sequential manner in such a way uh, there are no common elements between any two uh, events. Okay, if that scenario is there and someone is asking what is the probability of uh, uh, union of these uh, events, so just do summation. Just do compute the probability of individual uh, event. And to the sum, then you will get the probability of union of all these events. So it is only possible when uh, it satisfies the mutually disjoint criteria. Okay. And if you talk about further, then someone is saying that what is the probability? Uh, what you infer if you are having an event whose probability is equal to one, then you will simply say that uh, the event A is a very much certain kind of thing. That means there is no randomness, there is no probability kind of thing. It will occur certainly. Okay. And if uh, there is an event whose probability is equal to zero, what does it mean? Simply, we will infer that. And okay, uh, a whose probability is zero means it doesn't occur. Doesn't doesn't occur. Impossible kind of thing. Okay, if uh, one event is having probability 0.7, that means the we are <coughs> confident, uh, not 100 percent. We are con confident the 70 percent of occurrence of that event. So meaning of all these uh, uh, numbers. Okay. Now 
uh, if you talk about uh, probabilistic modeling, so you had already seen um, those three things. Uh, in short, I will talk about here. Omega you had already seen, then event you have already seen, and event we denote it by A, and the third one you had seen probability measure, okay, under those three axioms, okay. Now we will talk about very based on the nature of sample space and the event we can define uh, various type of uh, pro probabilistic modeling. Okay, so here there would be two kind of generally probabilistic modeling. One would be continuous, another would be discrete. Depends upon omega. If omega is discrete, then uh, the corresponding probabilistic modeling we will call it a discrete probabilistic modeling. And if omega is a continuous then you will call it a, a continuous probabilistic modeling. So, a continuous function everyone might be aware of that, but here I am talking about continuous set and discrete set kind of things. Okay. So, pictorially if you are trying to see the probabilistic modeling, so here uh, you start with a random experiment, okay. then you got sample of space, okay. uh, this is the first uh, what we call it and uh, in the same within you can call it zero of space. You see? random experience that means you initiate from here okay and uh, within the sample of space you come up with the uh, uh, first uh, sample of space then uh, event and then we associate probability measure to in each event okay third one this is the factorial pictorial definition what we call it and uh, here uh, in order to compute uh, probability measure we have to come up with some probability law. Probability law, I am not saying that is a basic concept kind of thing. It is probability law is one kind of uh, tool to help in order to compute probability measure of an event. Okay. So, probability law generally happens to be two kind of things. One is uniform law, another one is non-uniform law. Uniform law means uh, equal likely situation. Like if you all a student are uh, just uh, registered in this course, then uh, if I I am saying that who will be the topper. So here uh, everyone have equal chance of being a topper, equal chance. So because everyone, it is not like that partiality that that a student will be topper. So everyone. So equal likely situation you have. Uh, take an admission in this course in a very equally likely situation or through uniform law. Now, what will happen as course will progress, then you have to what? Uh, you have to be those who are very much focused, determined and following the content uh, and everything related to this course. Definitely uh, their chance of getting uh, grade A or uh, being a topper would be much more. Why? Because uh, uh, that person is uh, working in a different way than others, okay. So, non-uniform pattern is coming there, okay. Non-uniform pattern is coming. So, from uniform uniform to non-uniform. Another example, you can talk about uniform to non-uniform. So, uh, if you, uh, everyone might be aware of election process in India. So, those uh, uh, who are eligible for voting, uh, that means voting right you will get after 18. Uh, so, uh, what is happening that uh, they can vote it there that time they are having it is not like that one is having better ch chance of kid, uh, giving vote another than others so everyone is having equal chance of giving vote those who are eligible for voting so equal chance so there there is a uniform law for those and uh, uh, when you, <coughs> you you are going for voting uh, process okay but uh, if you have elected one uh, uh, MP, MLA or whoever for which uh, you people have given vote. So, after the election, uh, that person would be no more in your league in uniform law because that elected person will have various privilege. So, uh, non-uniform pattern, if you talk about that uh, facility wise uh, uh, distribution between you and the elected people there would be non-uniform kind of thing, okay. So, uh, actually everything starts at the beginning at the uniform level, 
and then you go for non-uniform label. So that kind of so those those are actually probability law, uniform and non-uniform. So there would be uniform, uh, the single kind of things we will talk about in, in non-uniform. Various kind of things will be come there. Okay. So uh, the uh, type of probabilistic model model it is based on uh, nature of omega, the sample of space. And uh, if you know nature of omega, then this will also decide nature of A as well, that event, okay, it would be. So, in order to talk about nature of omega, we need to talk about uh, two uh, specific things. So one is countable sets, countable set leads to our uh, construction of a discrete set. So, uh, uh, the omega sample space will have two kind of uh, nature, either it will be a discrete set, in short I am writing it d dot s dot discrete set or in sort of or it would be a continuous set. So continuous set uh, simply you can say that uh, a set where you observe uh, the element of set in a very continuous pattern, in continuum pattern. Like what is meaning of continuum pattern? If you take any two number, the, then uh, between those two numbers there would be infinitely many numbers. So simply you can say that the continuous set are those set uh, which are containing intervals intervals or union of intervals. So whenever you say interval or inter union of interval, you can call that that kind of set falls in the category of continuous set. And what is the concept of discrete set? So a set which is uh, uh, can which can be written in the form of a sequence. That means every element of the set can be written in term of a sequence. So like uh, X uh, x n uh, we call it so every term of the sequence written so for example is 1 by n a set whose uh, element are written in term of 1 by n so we can say that this one is a discrete set uh, like uh, uh, also if you write uh, uh, n natural number then this one is also a discrete set and also if you write uh, an in the last class i had told that uh, uh, if you are having integer so integer also also can be written in term of a sequence where a n is what uh, here it is defined like uh, uh, like a n equal to n by 2 uh, when n is uh, even okay n is even you call it n is even Okay, in short, I will write. I will write it. N is even. A space is here, and it is uh, actually uh, just recall the last lecture uh, what I had discussed. And if it is n is odd, then subtract it uh, from it a uh, one and divide it by two and take negative of that. That means uh, odd integers, uh, odd uh, natural number. Those are mapped to. Uh, negative integers and even map to positive integers and one map to uh, zero. So again, uh, this one is z. We denote it by z. This one is z. Uh, this one is n. Okay, all these are what uh, discrete set or countable set. So if you are trying to generalize this concept of countable set, you can say that in set theoretic manner or in uh, so you can say that countable set, uh, uh, this omega sample of space would be countable set. If there, if, if there is a bijection from set of uh, natural number to sample of, um, of omega, that means uh, we are writing omega in term of a sequence. In in term of sequence, we are in a single sequence, and in that case, the omega would be a countable set, and hence it would be a discrete set. So another example you can see pictorially like that you have taken a set omega and you are saying that these are the point uh, and this point you are giving uh, you are able to if uh, omega is a finite set by default easily you come up come up with a sequential number that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 5, 8 9 10 okay like that so every finite set by <coughs> default happens to be a countable set but if main problem it arises with infinite set so how we can come up so in infinite set 
uh, it is similar to like if you are talking about sequence, so generally we are talking about sequence uh, 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 with infinite terms, infinite, so that kind of thing. So, that one is and finite sequence, uh, a, term, a sequence with finite term always happens to be very much obvious kind of thing. Okay, and if it is there is a sequence with infinite terms, then we talk about convergency and various other kind of things. We are limited and other kind of things we are talking. About. So those are actually matter of uh, understanding. Okay. So here again, I am putting here. If you are taking set of natural number, it is a uh, what? Uh, it is a countable set. Why? Because this natural number we can write in the form of sequence, and the sequence term, uh, sequential term is what? X n equal to n. Very simple kind of. Uh, sequence. Now, if you talk about integers, there here also you can write integer in term of a sequence x n, where x n is defined as like this way. There are various ways to define, uh, but here in every um, uh, example you see bijection with set of natural number. Here this one is also a bijection, this one is a bijection you can see it like that. Okay. So, this bijection you can see it pictorially. So, 1 is mapped to 0, 2 is mapped to 1, 3 is mapped to minus 1, 4 is mapped to 2, 5 is mapped to minus 2, 6 is mapped to 3, 4 is 8 is mapped to minus 3, like that kind of thing. Okay. Here it will, it will be plus. Okay. And here it will be minus. Okay. Now, if you talk about further n cross n, that means uh, cartesian product of uh, <coughs> two natural set of natural number. So, here again this one is a what? It is a countable set. How countable set? You can see pictorially like weight wise. 1 1 is mapped to 1, uh, 1 2 is mapped to 2 and you can say that uh, it, it, it is going like this way. It is going like this, like here weight wise it, so you got sequential term so the, you can say that which one is first which one is second which one is third and like that you can say that this one is sequence okay it, it is a sequential things it will keep on going in such a way this path will uh, cover all the order pair of n cross n all the order pair of n cross n so you can say that this one is uh, the one one is a one this one is a two a three a four a five kind of thing so uh, here this uh, this one is talking about n cross n is also a uh, countable set why because we are able to put in the form of sequence that means uh, what is meaning of sequence that we are getting a bijection with set of natural number uh, we are getting bijection with set of natural number that is meaning of sequence okay so, uh, you can generalize it further for z cross z. If n cross a, n is a countable set, so n cross n and, and hence z cross z would be also a countable because z is uh, what? It is having a countable uh, map from uh, n to z. So, and vice, if every uh, bijection map, what? It happens to be invertible as well because of uh, 1 1 correspondence. So, reverse, uh, inverse function also you can find it. Here, uh, this is the uh, path uh, through which you can walk through every point in the uh, z set z cross z. This is the point. So, you can start with 0 and if you keep on walking like this way. So, in that process, this walk will uh, cover every point of z cross z. Uh, this one is a sequential walk. You can call it sequential walk. You can say this one is the a first uh, point the second point third point fourth fourth point fifth point likewise you will cover all the point in z cross z so you are getting a sequence so z cross z is also a countable set okay likewise if you talk about rationals and just take rationals uh, in the form of p by q in such a way the just put a specific case that here q is between 0 to 1 and you can uh, you are free to take anything so, but here in that process we can come up with a sequential representation of uh, uh, the collection of rational whose uh, denominator is between uh, 0 to 1. Okay. Okay. Or simply you are saying that uh, you are talking about rational number. Uh, Q is actually denoting a rational number. You can say that it is Q is actually uh, uh, you can say that A by B, uh, A and B uh, both are integer and it happens to be between 0 and 1. So, if you are talking about all rational between 0 and 1, 
and these can be written in, in this sequential form. So, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, then uh, just uh, you finish with uh, 1, then you will talk about 2 by 3, then you 1 by 4, 3 by 4, uh, just it is very much related with the denominator as well. Okay. Uh, then keep on, so in the numerator you have to take uh, number integers uh, less than the denominator up to that integers, uh, only integers will come here, okay, positive integers. So that in, through that this construction we can say that, that the all the rational between 0 to 1 uh, can be written in a, in a single sequence form. So uh, rational, these rational numbers happen to be countable in nature, okay, and hence a discrete set, okay. So, discrete set, you can say that uh, it is a collection of points, uh, okay, and uh, it is happening in such a way every point would be isolated point. What is meaning of isolated point? That means if you take a point and define a neighborhood of that point, a neighborhood as small as possible, the, in that uh, neighborhood, uh, the point would be itself. Uh, that neighborhood will contain the point itself, it will not contain other points. So, I am talking about uh, the current scenario, here I am talking about Z cross Z kind of thing. So, only we will talk about the order pair with uh, integer component, order pair with integer component, not like uh, a real component. So, here uh, if you take this, it is not containing any other integral order pair. It is, uh, if you talk about uh, this nearest point here, near uh, this nearing point, these points uh, are having coordinates which are real, those happens to be not uh, rational, okay, or not uh, uh, integer, sorry, uh, integer, integral, okay, this point, okay. So, you, so these points you can say that uh, isolated point, that means if you are taking a, a, a as a small as possible uh, neighborhood of a point and that neighborhood is not containing any other than uh, uh, the point itself, then that kind of point we call it isolated point. But if you talk about the interval, if you are taking an interval, uh, 0 to 1 if you talk about and suppose you are taking a point here so here in here <coughs> so if you are taking interval and take a, a, a point and take a, define a very small uh, neighboring or uh, area okay this will contain infinitely many points why because this uh, uh, in 0 1 in a inter it, it, it is an interval and the interval contains a continuum of points so, if you take a, as a small as in a possible neighborhood of a point, that will also contain a very small uh, interval. A interval means various points are there. So, here uh, no point can be an isolated point in this category, okay, in case of interval. But if you are taking about countable set, there you will get isolated point. So, I think uh, uh, the concept of countable set might be clear to everyone. Anyone is having any question? Srirang, anyone is having any question here regarding understanding of countable set? Do you have a question? Ah, yes. Sir, they, are, they have no question. Okay, then I will proceed further. So, thank you. So, I will talk next uncountable set and another name you can call it uh, continuous set that continuum pattern you will observe it here so we are talking about sample space which is uncountable in nature or continuous in nature so when it would be if we fail to find any bijection from state of natural number to omega so this uh, statement you can write in a very uh, mathematical or uh, computational form that we fail to write uh, omega uh, element of my omega in a term of a uh, single sequence in a term of single sequence okay that means if you fail to write in that pattern simply we will say that omega would be uncountable like set of irrational numbers and uh, real numbers and as you go further like that or in uh, another way you say that uh, just interval if you take interval you will fail to write uh, uh, in term of sequence if someone is saying that, okay, let us, uh, we can denote a, a inter given interval 0, 1 in term of a sequence, someone is claiming that. So, that claim will lead to a contradiction uh, through contour approach, we can call it like that. So, uh, say that uh, this omega is an interval, open interval 0, 1, we have taken open interval 0, 1, okay. 
and we are saying that okay uh, by contradiction we are saying that no omega is a countable set so if it is a countable set then we are able to, we are writing element of omega that of, of interval 0 1 in term of sequence we are calling it x1 x2 x3 so it sequence this sequence is constructed in such a way x belongs to 0 1 and uh, mm, here we say that uh, the decimal expansion if you try to see any real number you can always get a decimal expense uh, representation of that real number so uh, we are taking this these numbers are having decimal expansion in such a way only 3 and 4 are coming in the decimal expansion that 0 0.3 0 0.33 0 0.34 0 0.43 that that kind of uh, numbers okay uh, because all the numbers are between 0 and 1 so point uh, it would be like that point uh, uh, 3 4 3 3 and here we have fixed like a very specific that uh, this kind of 3 and 4 uh, it is constructed by 3 and 4 only okay so just take example like here x1 is uh, 0 0.343 uh, 443 x2 is 0.443443 and and so on it is going like this way okay now you construct an L example uh, like here uh, x it is 0 0.43 three such that uh, the x is not equal to any of these any of these okay so easily we can say that here x will if it x is not equal to any of these xi then what does it mean uh, x will not be it will be not in the uh, in the sequential representation of omega and we observe that x here in the decimal in its decimal representation uh, it is just containing 3 and 4 it is satisfying all the property of uh, our contradictory assumptions okay so uh, we arrive here at a contradiction despite x of that x is, uh, decimal expression of x is containing only 4 and 3 it is not in omega and once we are giving a, a specific uh, that uh, uh, decimal representation of the number in the form of sequence okay so uh, what assumption what uh, this we had taken it is a contradiction we can't put uh, an interval in the form of a sequence simply we so if you are willing to put in that form of uh, sequence then the sequence of numbers of the given interval then you will leads to contradiction but uh, that one is a false thing okay so it is a little bit indirect uh, process another example of continuous state you can talk about uh, if uh, in movie and you might have seen some kind of uh, casino scene or something like that so there that there would be a pointer that will move uh, uh, along the circumference uh, centered at the origin uh, center of the uh, that uh, that uh, game casino game okay and the, if you talk about uh, that uh, <coughs> reading on the circumference it is a continuous number that circumference would be a continuous number it would be some kind of interval for the sake of simplicity you say that the circumference uh, take number between uh, 0 and 1 ok uh, that counter uh, reads or pointer read in a number between 0 and 1 so it is all these numbers in between 0 and 1 it, it is coming in the continuum fashion ok so it is another example of that another uh, continuous sample of space if you what is meaning of continuous sample of space that means uh, if omega is at least continuum in nature what does it mean it means it contains an interval or union of intervals what is further what you say that i am trying to conclude all these for continuous sample of space that means you have failed to find any bijection or injection uh, map from set of natural number to omega that means it is saying that you can't express omega in term of a single sequence all these are talking about same kind of sample of space that one is a continuous sample of space it is means continuum point collection of continuum point here uh, we are talking about continuous computation of probability measure uh, in the discrete probability modeling what is meaning of that that means here sample of space is a discrete set it is a discrete set what does it mean that means we are able to write element of the sample of space in term of a sequence so here actually element of uh, 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 that sample of space we denote by uh, a small omega so you we are writing it here omega is actually equal to collect uh, it is a uh, collection of outcome where the outcomes are sequential in pattern 
सो यू कैन कॉल इट ओमेगा एन और ओमेगा के यस के बिलोंग्स टू यर नेचुरल नंबर यू कैन कॉल इट और सबसेट ऑफ नेचुरल नंबर ऑल्सो यू कैन कॉल इट ओके दिस दैट मीन्स हियर के मे टेक फाइनाइट वैल्यू और इनफाइनाइट वैल्यू इन ए सिक्वेंशियल मैन ओके सो इफ यू आर टेकिंग काउंटेबल सैम्पल ऑफ स्पेस और यू टॉक अबाउट डिस्क्रिट सैम्पल ऑफ स्पेस देन देर आर टू सीनैरियो फाइनाइट डिस्क्रिट सैम्पल ऑफ स्पेस और इनफाइनाइट सो फर्स्ट वी विल टॉक अबाउट फाइनाइट डिस्क्रिट सैम्पल ऑफ स्पेस एंड वी आर टेकिंग प्रोटी मेजर विथ यूनिफॉर्म लॉ प्रोटी मेजर विथ यूनिफॉर्म लॉ सो वट वुड बी द प्रोटी मेजर हियर इन दिस प्रोसेस इट इज वेरी मच इम्पल इज इट कम्प्लीट सो वी आर थिंग दैट काउंटेबल सैम्पल स्पेस दैट मीन्स देर इज अ बाइजेक्शन फ्रॉम सेट ऑफ नेचुरल नंबर टू ओमेगा एंड वाइस वर्सा ओके एंड देन इट इज वी से दैट इट इज काउंटेबल सेट एंड हैंस वी कैन से दैट इट इज अ डिस्क्रिट सेट सो ए प्रोबाबिलिटी मॉडल विथ काउंटेबल सैम्पल ऑफ स्पेस और डिस्क्रिट सैम्पल ऑफ स्पेस वी कॉल इट डिस्क्रिट डिस्क्रिट प्रोबाबिलिस्टिक मॉडल ओके सो हियर वट इज मीनिंग ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म लॉ ऑफ अक्रेंस ऑफ आउटकम मीन्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट यू लाइकली अक्रेंस ऑफ द आउटकम ओके so a finite discrete sample of space will lead to discrete probability model with explicit formula of probability measure like the number of element in an event divided by number of element in sample of space that formula we will see uh, that so that formula is only true when your sample of space is a finite and a discrete set finite that means there are finite number of outcome okay if in front number of outcome we this would be not true so only that scenario we are going to talk about so consider a random experiment and having uniform law of occurrence okay of the outcome uh, and the sample of space is a finite sample of space okay so we can write sample of space in term of a finite sequence that means sample of space is containing how many outcome and number of outcome if you are tossing a coin that means a uh, two outcome if you are throwing a dice that means six outcome so like that kind of thing if you are uh, uh, throwing two dice together then <coughs> 36 outcome if you are tossing three coin together then uh, eight outcome so that can so n would be depends upon n. so n is any in all this situation n is a finite number that means uh, our sample of this is a finite set and hence a discrete set in easily you can say that okay you can call this number come first that number second like that so sequence you are getting it like this way okay so if uh, n is finite and omega is finite so if you talk about any subset of omega uh, which satisfy a certain a statement that would be also a finite and here we are getting uh, a as an event uh, with respect to this omega so by default uh, a will contains uh, less than or equal to uh, number of element here in a would be less than equal to number of element in omega and a that in a elements are also coming from omega itself so by default you can say that k would be less than equal to n okay if omega is finite then a is would be also finite event would be also finite okay event of interest if that is the scenario so uh, this uh, uh, we say that uh, here uh, all the outcomes are having equal likely probability uh, equal, equal chance of occurrence so so that in uh, probability measure we are adding uh, this is the first we say that probability of omega 1 equal to probability of omega 2 equal to probability of omega 3 it will go up to equal to probability of omega n so remember that here omega when we are saying that omega uh, 1 it is an outcome so uh, directly in the form of uh, omega 1 we can't say that uh, event because event whenever we are writing event it happens to be in set theoretic nature it must be a set or subset of a sample of space so set uh, uh, a set we always denoted by curly bracket so actually when you are saying that uh, outcome uh, event uh, omega 1 omega 1 is the outcome when you are saying that uh, omega 1 is an event as well so you have to put a curly bracket okay but uh, we don't have to bother much this notation uh, we can simplify to this form just for you application uh, perspective okay here uh, by default we consider that uh, omega 1 is actually defining an event containing the outcome omega 1 only okay that also 
because we are just interested to find probability of an outcome, we a probability of an event, not like that probability of a single outcome. That scenario is not there. So here, when you are someone is saying that what is the probability of omega one, actually we are computing probability of the subset which is containing only omega one. So that kind of subset scenario should be there. So that means this, this and this are same. Okay. This one is talking about this one, okay. And this here, we call it, uh, uh, and it is coming uh, through equally likely principle or uniform law. So we call it uh, the equation expression one. And in the second expression, we will take properties of uh, uh, or exams of probability measure. We know that uh, omega is what? Omega is containing uh, having n number of uh, outcome. These are the outcomes. So omega we write as a union of these outcome omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 up to omega n, okay. And what is the property of uh, capital omega? Uh, it is uh, equal to 1. That means uh, here omega 1 and omega 2, uh, both are mutually disjoint. Uh, if you are, what is meaning of uh, <coughs> mutually disjoint here? So, simply if you take a coin and toss it, can we say that head and tail will come together? Is there any common uh, things between head and tail? No. As an outcome, we can't say that uh, there would be any common thing, uh, con common occurrence. It is not possible. So, those are mutually disjoined. So, that's the way the omega, uh, omega 1, omega 2, or omega 3, all these are the outcome of a random experiment. Okay. So, here this would be mutually uh, disjoined itself. The corresponding event would be mutually divine in the event framework. Okay. And if we, that is the scenario, then just apply the third property of axioms of probability measure that if these are the mutually exclusive events, so we can write uh, the probability of union of these one as uh, summation of probability of each, each individual. Okay, it is coming from that normalizing probability and the third axioms of probability measure. Okay, so call it equation two. This one is equation two, and solve equation one and two. Then what you will say that. Uh, here that means probability of omega 1 is equal to probability of omega 2 and like that way so you will say that probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 2 plus probability of omega uh, 3 you can write it like the probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 1 and how many times it is coming n time so n time probability of omega 1 is equal to 1 so n times to probability of omega 1 equal to 1 so you can say the probability of omega 1 is 1 by n and hence uh, we know probability of omega 2, omega 3, all these would have the same probability uh, 1 by n. So, this we call it uniform probability law measure, uniform probability measure that each outcome is having the same probability, okay, uniform probability measure. Now, if you are taking an event A which is not containing all possible outcome, it is containing some <coughs> possible outcome that we say that it is uh, uh, containing k outcomes, okay. Okay, so what is the probability of A? So here we have to sum the probability of outcome omega 1 and omega 2 up to probability of omega k. Okay, and what is the probability of omega 1? It is 1 by n, probability of omega 2 is 1 by n, probability of omega k is 1 by n. So that means 1 by n, how many times we are summing? We are summing it k times. So probability of A would be k by n. Or what is k? k is talking about number of element in A. That means cardinality of A, generally we denote it by uh, that uh, uh, bar within A, okay. Sorry, A within bar. And here capital N is talking about number of outcome in the sample of space. So that one is talking about, so we can generally de denote it by uh, the omega within bar. So this, if you try to see, it is actually conclusion. It is the last step in order to compute probability measure. It is not, it should not be the first approach to compute the probability of a event, of probability of an event. So, this was the conclusion part. It is coming at the last, okay. In high school, you might have seen this is the starting uh, way to compute probability of an event, but it is not like that in higher semester courses, okay. Here in uh, higher, higher studies, okay. So, in UG, you have to take like that. This should, should be the last, last thing. First, you have to start with these things axioms and uniform law kind of thing okay and last result it will, you are getting as a conclusion it is a just a conclusion uh, under the probability measure okay so i uh, will take various example 
so consider an experiment of throwing a dice okay and you know that uh, if you talk about in a indian perspective and how many faces would be there in a dice six faces would be in a dice so dice you can draw it like this way okay and the faces you can count it you can say that this one is one <coughs> this one is two <coughs> the side face <coughs> this one is three this one is four <coughs> left side face uh, this one is five so in your notebook you can draw easily it is very easy to draw and the upper side face six so in total six faces are there so uh, event we denoted by uh, by outcome we denoted by name of these faces so actually if you uh, throw a dice there, there would be six outcomes what are those one two three four five six okay so this is the scenario okay now we are going to compute probability of uh, uh, at the outcome level so here each faces uh, are equally likely because we are taking a regular dice there is no bias kind of thing okay regular dice so each faces is having equal chance of occurrence that means uniform law so under the uniform law we say that probability of occurrence uh, of phase 1 is equal to probability of occurrence of phase 2 and likewise probability of occurrence equal to uh, probability of occurrence of phase 6 okay this is coming through uniform law or equally likely law uniform law okay now the second property uh, secondly we will apply the properties from axioms of probability measure so then probability measure we know that probability of sample space is equal to 1 and sample space is, is containing 6 uh, uh, outcomes so we can write sample space as a union of these okay outcome in the set theory form so uh, uh, what is the probability of sample space? It would be at least equal to sum of these probability. Okay. Why these are the uh, these outcomes are mutually disjoint. Phase one and two in throwing a single dice can't occur together. Phase one and two, or phase two or three can't occur together. If you are unless you are taking two different dice, so uh, that one is not possible in a single throw of a dice. So here by default, uh, phase one, phase two. Uh, would be mutually uh, disjoint likewise 2 and 3 would be mutually disjoint because both can't occur in together okay so uh, probability of omega it would be what sum of the probability of this outcome okay and what is the probability of omega it is equal to 1 so, so sum of the probability of this outcome it is equal to 1 so we are having two equation and uh, okay so by solving it easily we can say that we substitute probability of 1 equal to probability of 2 so take here probability of 1 plus 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 probability of 1 how many times 6 times it came so 6 times probability of 1 equal to 1 and hence probability of uh, <coughs> 1 is 1 by 6 a probability of uh, 1 is equal to probability of 2 that would, would be also 1 by 6 so like th this is the way to compute probability of an event okay uh, probability of an outcome so it is not like that uh, uh, number uh, formula based it is coming from axioms Kolmogorov approach now we take second example through a dice and getting number exactly divisible by 3 okay so remember that again here we are defining a event by using a, a statement that getting a number divisible by number divisible by 3 okay so if you throw a dice then you will get uh, six faces possible faces that means these are the possible outcome when you are throwing a dice so if you are willing to identify an event which is saying that we are looking for the number which are exactly divisible by three that <coughs> what are the number here in this uh, uh, sample space three is actually uh, one is not divisible by six uh, uh, okay two is also in the same way yeah 3 is divisible by itself 4 is not divisible by <coughs> 3 6 is not divisible by 3 and then oh sorry 6 is divisible by 3 5 is not divisible by 3 6 is divisible by 3 
so the event of interest would be uh, a set containing just two outcomes, three and six. So we have already seen that uh, here uh, how to come up with sample space and event with respect to a given a statement. Okay, but if you are willing to talk about uh, uh, further computation of uh, uh, the probability of occurrence of these outcomes, so uh, first one is coming through probability law. The second one is coming through uh, normalizing property of uh, omega sample space, and you got this formula. Okay, I had already discussed it. Second time, okay. Uh, now uh, I'm making another example, a similar kind of things like uh, throwing two dice together, and <coughs> we are defining an event by the statement that sum is seven. So this is the corresponding event, and this is the sample space. The sample space would have 36. Uh, element okay outcome so how will compute probability of uh, this order pair okay so here through equally likely of, uh, principle <coughs> you talk about probability of occurrence of 1 comma 1 so this here you talk about uh, first dice first dice and uh, this one is the second dice so first dice will have occurrence of what so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and likewise 1 2 3 4 5 6 for second dice and uh, in that we say that each point uh, occurs uh, uniform way or feel likely principle so that's why uniform this 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 is due to uniform principle now next you apply normalizing property of sample space or we can say that you can talk about uh, this property okay by solving this quality equation one this quality equation 2 and solve these two and by solving you will come to see that probability of 1 1 is 1 by 36 likewise probability of 1 1 is equal to probability of 1 2 and probability of 6 6 so what is the probability of individual outcome it would be equal to 1 by 36 so we have already computed probability of <coughs> um, event at the outcome level now we are willing to compute probability of an event a. A is what? It is containing these six elements. So, how will compute probability of uh, A by summing the probability of the corresponding outcome? Probability of 1, 6 is 1 by 6, probability of 2, 5 is 1 by 6, uh, 1 by 36, probability of 6, 1 is 1 by 36. So, it would be 1 by 36. How many times we are adding? We are adding 6 times. So, it would be uh, 6 plus, uh, okay, uh, it would be 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6, uh, 36. Uh, plus uh, 1 by 36 uh, it will go up to 6 term so it would be 6 by 36 and if you simplify you are getting 1 by 6 this is the probability of occurrence of 1 1 or you can call it 1 2 or something like that and it is actually taking a uh, empirical formula like number of outcome in the uh, a and number of outcome in the sample space so why because uh, that this uh, we have taken discrete sample space okay Till now, any question from anyone? Any question? Sridang, any question anyone is having? Do you have questions? Do you have questions? Do you have any questions? Sir, they don't have any questions. Okay, okay. Then I am going forward. So, I will talk about discrete sample space and non-uniform law in order to compute probability measure. So, non-uniform pattern, that uh, specification, we say that we start with uniform law and we see some uh, specification in order to uh, utilize some other kind of uh, better things. Okay. So, if you take a discrete probability model with finite sample space and non-uniform law of occurrence, like if you flip coin uh, two times and report the number of heads, report the number of heads, okay. So, you come up with uh, computing and uh, probability of an event having k heads. So, what is the probability of uh, a, a1? A1 means uh, it is talking about an event having uh, probability of success one one head okay one head 
so uh, <coughs> like a2 will talk about uh, it is talking about you have tossed uh, a coin and there you are talking about uh, probability of uh, k success the k head is coming and likewise you will keep on uh, okay uh, <coughs> keep on going like that okay so here the situation here it would be uh, that means here how many things you are tossing to, uh, two coins okay so n equal to 2 number of trial is equal to 2 that's why uh, here now uh, a1 would be what a1 it would be that means you are getting one head when you are tossing two coins together one head you are talking about a2 you are talking about uh, uh, getting two head when you are tossing two coins together <coughs> a0 is talking about zero head when you are tossing two coins together and a3 is talking about uh, three head when you are tossing two coins so the uh, ak would be a3 that means a3 would is not possible why if you are tossing two coin and you are saying that three head that one is impossible you can't get three heads when you are tossing just two coin so it is empty sheet so a3 onward would be uh, empty sheet those would be impossible kind of event okay so that's why here probability of ak we define it through binomial formula formula 2 choose k p to the power k into 1 minus p to the power 2 minus k where k will take possible value 0 1 or 2 up to this 2 okay it can't take 3 because the in that case the a3 would be impossible and a4 would be impossible kind of thing so if you're talking to coin you can't talk about occurrence of three heads or occurrence of four or five heads like that so those are impossible kind of thing okay okay and p is what a small p is probability of success we call it or probability of getting head generally people are calling getting head always as a success kind of thing uh, uh, but that one is not a very hard ki kind of thing so uh, this is the property of success p you can say that so it depends it depends upon the nature of coin if you are taking a unbiased coin or fair coin the p would be what it uh, 0 0.5 if you are taking a biased coin biased towards getting head then uh, we say that p equal to 0 0.7 something 0 0.8 like that kind of thing if you are uh, talking about uh, bias towards hay, tail then p would be near to 0 like 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.1 kind of thing okay so depends upon those happens to be biased kind of thing and unbiased means it is uh, equally likely chance of both the head and tail is having and p equal to 0 0.5 so here uh, you can see that uh, uh, non uniform pattern you will observe that equally likely situation is no more here okay so uh, if you take another example that a discrete productive model with countably infinite sample of space and non uniform law when we will get that suppose we take an example that flip a coin until you will get head or first head so it is not like that in the first toss you will get head it may if you are not getting uh, head in the first toss you have to look for second toss and third toss like that way and uh, suppose it may also possible that uh, keep uh, when you are tossing a lot but you are not getting head so that uh, that definitely that kind of uh, event happens to be rare in things but the, the, uh, definitely that one is having certain uh, some amount of probability that may occur that uh, there in situation if you will keep on tossing but you are not getting a head not getting a head so that may also possible so if in that situation okay uh, you are getting uh, yes sir uh, students are uh, asking to repeat once again uh, this thing, uh, this. Uh, the, this correct example of tossing a coin uh, in order to get the first head. So, like, uh, yeah, uh, I am saying that uh, uh, you are having a coin. Yes. Before uh, this, uh, this example. Yes. Sir. Ah, yes, sir. This example only. Okay. So that means I am talking about finite sample of space uh, and non-uniform law. This one. Okay. okay. So here situation, uh, it is one kind of binomial uh, distribution. I will talk again later. 
so here situation is coming that you are tossing two coin you are tossing two coin together okay and you are reporting number of heads you are reporting numbers of heads so based on number of heads you are decide, defining event so if you say that a0 what does it mean a0 that means a0 is event having uh, zero head what would be a0 then in when you are tossing two coin and a0 is talking about uh, outcome in tossing two coin where you are getting zero head what would be a0 anyone what kind of outcome it would be so simply when you are tossing uh, two coin so the first coin is having uh, <coughs> outcome head and these are the possible outcome head and tail okay and if you are uh, uh, taking two coin toss, uh, tossing two coin together then it would be cross product of head head and tail with head head and tail so what are the possible outcome it would be order pair of uh, these uh, head and tail so how many possibilities would be there in the sample space if you are tossing two coin together what are the outcome so it would be head 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 tail tail head and tail tail these are the possible outcome when you are tossing two coin together these are the possible outcome okay and now if you talk about uh, uh, this outcome how many head you observe in this outcome anyone how many head you observe in this outcome zero head so this as uh, an event where you say that zero head that we denoted by a0 so so a0 will contain only uh, one outcome that one is tt now if i am saying that uh, uh, a1 that means an uh, event which is with respect to just one head getting one head so uh, when when you are getting exactly one head either in this scenario or in this scenario so a1 contains these two ht and th okay if i am saying that uh, a2 that means getting two head when you will get two head that means you toss two coin and in the both coin you of c head so this is the possibility so the a2 is containing just this scenario okay now if i am asking to compute probability of uh, a not what does it means that means you are tossing two coin in the two coin uh, uh, just compute the probability here probability of uh, <coughs> head is p we are saying that uh, we don't know the coin is bias or unbias i haven't told that so by default probability of getting head we will denote it by p p may be 0.5 something like that so when you are saying that zero head so what is the uh, probability of uh, Uh, in this uh, you are getting tt kind of thing probability of t is what 1 minus p probability of uh, p is uh, actually p a small p is probability of getting a head and then what is the probability of t it would be 1 minus p and tt coming to the uh, two times so 1 minus p into 1 minus p that means you say that 1 minus p whole square okay and uh, Uh, you have perform uh, two toss of a coin okay or you have flip two coins you have toss two coin together so in that uh, uh, how many head you are talking about uh, zero head so two choose zero we are talking about this so this is the probability value of two choose zero it would be equal to one by default so equal to, so actually probability of a not would be one minus p to the power Uh, 2 1 minus p into 1 minus p that means 1 minus p to the power 2 if you talk about this scenario uh, here you are getting head and tail what is the probability of getting head is p and probability of getting tail is 1 minus p that means p into 1 minus p you are writing it like this way and now here how many outcomes are there two outcomes 
so when uh, how you are getting you are saying that you are tossing two coins and the two coin how many outcomes you are getting that uh, this we call it binomial coefficient two choose one that means uh, in two toss we are talking about a w occurrence of one head so that we will call it two choose one so it, value of this one will be two so th it would be two choose one p to the power one into one minus p to the power uh, two minus one that means is uh, one okay so this is the property of a one we call it this one this is the property of a one we have computed property of a one likewise property of a two we can compute so a two means head head that means p into p p into p means p square okay so that means out of two coin toss uh, you got two head so two choose two and that means what is the this one is a combinatorial formula what is the value of this one one two choose two value of this one is equal to one okay it is equal to one so here p square and head head so p square is coming so same thing i have written in the form of uh, unified framework i have written in so here k equal to zero it is talking about a not uh, k equal to one it is talking about a one k equal to two it is talking about uh, a two okay so same in form pattern i have written it so this is property of k p to the power k and this would be would be 1 minus uh, uh, p uh, to the power 2 minus k okay so here here uh, k equal to 1 so it would be 2 minus 1 is 1 so this one is is it clear to everyone okay uh, yes okay fine and if someone is having uh, issue with this uh, a small p uh, it is just uh, one kind of parameter of the <coughs> coin if you change the coin p will change so it, it, it is talking about fairness um, fairness of coin if coin is fair p would be 0.5 if coin is unfair uh, that means bias the p would be uh, not 0.5 it would be less than 0.5 or greater than 0.5 okay so it depends upon that the second example is, uh, is it, uh, talking about uh, it is geometric instance like uh, uh, you are flipping a coin till uh, first head till first year. once uh, uh, you will get hit you will uh, stop tossing a coin or flipping a coin so uh, uh, you make uh, if you are very much lucky you can get uh, uh, head in the first toss if you are it is uh, if it is not possible then you may get head in the second and third or likewise so here you have to toss coin uh, infinitely many times and it is coming in countable pattern so in this case the sample of space is what it is a natural number set of natural number that means it is a starting from uh, 1 to infinity it will go natural number okay and if you i am asking size uh, asking like that if you are getting your head in the first uh, toss this one is first toss then what is the what would be that kind of uh, what is the property of that it would be just uh, uh, <coughs> p property would be p here k equal to 1 the p into oh, 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so it just it would be if you are getting head in the first toss property of uh, a1 would be uh, what p and if you are getting uh, uh, head in the second toss why you went for second toss because in the first toss you haven't got head so that's why you are performing second toss so that means in the first toss you have observed uh, tail so property of tail is uh, getting tail is 1 minus p 1 minus p uh, times p so uh, here if you take k equal to 2 so uh, it will be 2 minus 1 to the power uh, uh, sorry 2 minus 1 here 1 minus p to the power 2 minus 1 that means 1 so p into 1 minus p you are getting it when x equal to uh, k equal to 2 okay likewise uh, you are talking about third trial why you are talking uh, third trial because you haven't got head in the first and second trial that's why you are talking about third trial so in that case so in the first you have got uh, tail and that property is 1 minus p in the second trial you have got tail so property of that one is 1 minus p so 1 minus p to the power 2 and in the third you are getting a head so that property is p so p into 1 minus p to the power 2 likewise if you talk about uh, 4 uh, k equal to 4 what does it mean means that means you haven't got uh, head in the first three trials 
that's why that's why you are performing the fourth trial okay so uh, here probability of this would be 1 minus p and so in that process uh, this is the geometric formula what we are getting it like this so that means it is talking about for you are getting head in the k trial and uh, before that in the first k minus 1 trial you got failure so 1 minus uh, p uh, is coming <coughs> k minus 1 times so that's the probability of uh, that failure 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 and at exactly at the k trial you are getting success so p into 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 you are getting it like that so this one is actually geometric uh, formula you can call it a geometric uh, sequence kind of pattern it is taking r to the power n kind of pattern r, r to the power k kind of pattern you observe that so through that so this is the another example where you observe non uniform distribution okay uh, each outcome uh, any two outcome are having two different kind of properties we can simply say that now uh, <coughs> It is impossible to assign a uniform probability measure to each outcome in a countable sample of space while satisfying the axioms of probability. Okay. So, what is meaning of that? If you are taking a countably infinite sample of space, that means uh, uh, a sample of space uh, having infinitely many numbers, it is a countable set, but having infinitely many many numbers. That means set of natural numbers, set of uh, integers, kind of thing. Okay and here there you will will be, will be not able to come up with uniform law there so uniform law is not working here so the one example is this uh, uh, the, this example here uniform law will not work uniform law is only working in when your sample of space is finite okay when sample of space is finite it will not work when your sample of space is infinite so another scenario uh, just one situation i have taken like if you are saying that uh, uh, there is a, uh, it is a proof by contradiction, uh, I am saying that we are having a sample of space omega, which is having countably uh, infinite number of uh, outcomes, omega i, i vary from 1 to infinity, you can say that like that. And we are saying that it is having uniform law, that means each outcome is having the same probability and we call it uh, uh, probability of omega i equal to p for i, i varies from 1 to infinity. Okay. So, if you take a uh, normalizing property from the probability measure, we know that uh, uh, sum of probability of all the outcome, it must be equal to 1 and here we have taken it like that, uh, uh, what uh, probability of uh, uh, p omega, the probability of omega i is equal to p. So, we are actually one kind of things, we are summing p how many times infinite time, p plus p plus p plus p like we are going up to infinite. So, we know that if you are summing one quantity n times so n times p we are getting it like that. So, here we are summing this uh, p infinity times so p into infinity. So, that means in right hand side we are getting infinity and in left hand side we are getting 1. It is a contradiction kind of thing. So, simply I would like to say that if you are having a, a sample of space which is countable or discrete set and having infinite number of uh, outcome then there we can't define uniform probability measure. That means each outcome is having the same probability. We can't define like that, that scenario. So, uniform pattern only we can define when sample space is having finite number of outcome, finite picture. Okay. I think it might be clear to everyone.